Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Screen Junkies Movie Fights, powered by the Popcorn Talk Network. Now your host, Andy Signore. Uh oh, it's already beginning. Welcome to uh, Movie Jeez. Fights. Screen guys, 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 calm down. It's this is gonna be a good one. I can tell just by the fighting already. Welcome to Movie Fights. Uh, uh, so happy to be here. We have so many exciting guests and so much exciting stuff to talk about, uh, including we are we didn't really want to tackle it, but so many people have asked us the interview should it have been canceled. We're gonna break it down. What video game movie? Uh, should be made since we have a, a fantastic video game expert here I'll introduce in a minute and best Ian McKellen movie another really fun topic so lots of fun stuff as always if you don't like what we're talking about at a, at a specific moment click the bottom right if you're watching on YouTube but you can pick your fight and, and zoom around to all the battles that we have today uh, also before we start I want to also always mention how grateful we are to be here on the Popcorn Talk Network very exciting place to be uh, so much fun content they're doing. Please go check out Popcorn Talk Network on the YouTube uh, and see all their exciting movie discussion shows. We're happy to be a part of that family. Maria Menudos, Smrozno, thank you guys. Uh, please keep supporting them. Um, and also support us on iTunes because if you, unless you are listening to iTunes, well then awesome, you're already there. Uh, but you can download us on iTunes, the podcast, subscribe, rate, all that jazz. Uh, let's get to this fight. All right, the gladiators for today are here to argue. Uh, let's meet up first. I'm so happy to have him here from Smosh Games. It's Jovenshire. And so happy to be here. Every day I get to talk about video games, but now I get to talk about my other passion, movies and superheroes and, and fun stuff like that. Yet yeah, we somehow managed to squeeze in some video game stuff for you. Yep. Today. Works for me. Next to him, he's back. He's a, a fan favorite and some, not always, but th that's what I love about it. You love him, you hate him. It's Roger Barr. That's right. And uh, I apologize to you guys in advance because there's probably going to be a lot of Nick's blood on you by the end of this episode. <laughs> I'm right. in the splash zone. So, it it yeah. is movie fights. Yeah. And next to him, his arch ne em nemesis, it's Nick Mundy. The bad boy of movie fights is back. Fight Monday, fight. It's been fight a, Monday, fight. It's been a die while. Die Monday, die. Yeah. Was, the, was the cage we had you in uh, comfortable all these weeks? Yeah, I was busy. The okay. one you've been yeah, uh, was, dodging just, me in? Yeah. I'm, I'm here every day, sleeping yeah. on that couch. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have nowhere uh, else to go. Well, we're happy to have you back, Nick. And, we're, and we Thanks figured if back. we're going to bring you back, let's bring the guy who brought Actually, the most passion against you mm -hmm. last time. Oh, 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 we, we got man. some over-the-top yeah. action yeah. going here. I was going to last catch him over-the-top better. Yeah. And as always, on the couch, fact-checking us to make sure we are correct, it's Dan Merle on the Dan Cam. Hi, how's it Hi, going? Dan. That's enough. How's the Dan Cam feeling today? I'm, I'm worn out over, uh, still from last night's epic schmo battle. Yeah, we pre-taped this, and last night was our live schmoville. If you didn't see it, go check out Schmo's uh, No Podcast. We did a live movie fight with this fellow... That we, fellow, Hal Rudnick. He beat the crap out of Screen Junkies for Schmoes. And spoiler alert. We, we came to their we house just and beat them, them. But I think it was a fair fight. I do, I do think I judged fairly. Uh, all right. Well, let's them. quit talking about ourselves and let's get to these battles. That's all In the great true. words of Ken Watanabe, let them fight. What was that? I didn't, I didn't catch that. <laughs> He's very quiet. Did anyone hear that? Uh, right. It was a mediocre yeah. important. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is a controversial one. And I, I want to be careful because this isn't a politics show. That's what's fun about this show. It's a movie, dumb movie show. But there, it's a big issue and so many people are talking about us on Twitter. I thought we have to at least discuss it. Uh, round one, why so serious? One of hundreds of who asked on Twitter, do you agree or disagree with Sony's decision to cancel the interview? Uh, so obviously... If you've lived on a rock, you you uh, wouldn't know the story, but Sony had this movie, The Interview, where Seth Rogen, James Franco, stupid comedy, you know, not stupid's a mean word, silly comedy, uh, where they are then interviewing Kim Jong-un, and they uh, the government says, why don't you go get him, kill him while you're there? It's clearly a silly comedy, but North Korea was upset, Sony hackers were upset, everyone got hacked at Sony, and then now it's threatening, we're going to blow up a theater or do something crazy if you show the movie. The theaters back down uh, and said we wouldn't show the movie, which then prompted Sony to finally have an out and say, well, we're not releasing the movie. And now they've said they're not releasing it anywhere, not on VOD, not on anything, nothing. Mm -hmm. So it brings up the question, is this was this uh, was this a good decision? Do we want to still see the interview? Would we have gone to see the interview? Maybe is it another good question to ask. Uh, let's start with you, Jovenshire. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to say, yes, uh, it was a smart decision that they didn't release it. Uh, I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes that maybe just everyone's not uh, aware of. Uh, seeing how, even if the smallest incident would have occurred, where, hell, if someone had tripped up the stairs in the theater, fallen down and broken their ankle, uh, the story would be completely different. People wouldn't be complaining about, oh, let them release the movie. It'd be like, oh man, look at how greedy Sony is. They're just looking for a dollar uh, that they'll use all this publicity just to make that dollar back. And then now they're backing up and they're saying, no, we aren't going to release it. And I think for them in the long run, 
is a better uh, is a better play on on their end. I think that they can make the money back that they've lost on the production of this movie. Plus, you just have to look at risk risk assessment. Is it worth it? It's absolutely not worth it. If, if just the smallest incident could have happened from this, whether it be something something small like more leaks from from Sony or something big like any kind of attack, like it's just not worth it. Roger. Um, I also think it was a good decision. Uh, I think Sony was in kind of a lose-lose situation here either way, honestly. Um, you know, whether it got released in theaters or if they choose not to, uh, people are going to be complaining about it one way or the other, whether anything happened in the theaters or not. Um, I also, the real reason I, I think it's a good thing is because now everybody will not have to spend $20 on Seth Rogen uh, fumbling through another movie. I don't... I don't care Ouch. about it. I don't wow. care about it. I don't want to see Seth Rogen uh, doing his. <coughs> <coughs> is he laughing? Is he coughing? I don't know. I don't give a shit. I don't want to. I don't like want to see that. Nope. 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 That is like the least like of nope. the concerns. Nope. Hey, no. Right, no. Nick. No. What's your stance? What's Korea your stance? could have been pissed off at Annie, and I would be the first person to see Annie if they threatened to like do something to take us away from seeing it. This is all about freedom of speech, and you're talking about risk assessment and money. It's not about money. It's about like freedom of speech and th that's what this country is built on and like look we they made a stupid movie that's okay like you can go see it or not i would choose to see it just look, to like give a big middle finger be realistic care. be realistic everyone is still anyone who wants to see it will be able to find it on the internet which now is, they just which, won't have to pay for it which is awful which is awful because well, hold on that's not true the, the, the according to the new from the guardians of peace they're like well now you never can release this movie yeah it can never see the light of day we aren't leaking it, yeah. and now they've also said already, we're not leaking more Sony items. So, and uh, it's already creating a slippery slope because Paramount pulled Team America from screenings that the, like other theaters were doing. So anyone complains about a movie because it hurts their feelings, like you know, like you complain about Fast. See, this Fury, is great. I'm gonna I'm gonna email. write North Korea and say, hey, I heard they said something bad about North Koreans in Fast and the Furious, and yeah. it's canceled. Well, you know, that's what I want. Gonna do. I want we're, that. That's great. They just set the president. Yeah. They just set the. Do president. you really want that, Roger? Yes. Come on. And it's a. And it's a bad situation. And look, look, I get it. What if like, they said Interstellar is against uh, North Korea? I already saw it. I'm okay with it. Christopher <laughs> well, Nolan's yourself. next movie. That's the best, no, best movie he's ever and, made. Know, I get your point, and I see your point. Set up a theater, hire security, charge $50 for the tickets, do that. I don't care to pay for the security, but I want to go see it as a, like... Interesting. Yeah. I, now, would you have wanted to see this movie if it wasn't for all the controversy, though? That is... I, yes, I would, because I see stupid comedies all the time. I'm on, I do a show called no. Movie Fights. I need to see stupid crap all the time. That's the thing that I hate like, about this whole situation, though. I mean, it, it, no one really cared that much about this movie when it was announced. That, that doesn't matter. It, if they were talking no. about Annie, I would be the first person to see Annie because someone's saying, I can't do something, and like this is what our country was built upon. Well, let's step back. It's a good question. I want to ask each of you. Would you have seen this movie without the controversy? No. No. Yes. Would you have seen the movie, hence the controversy, and for the... F you to the terrorists, and they decided to release it in a theater. Might you have changed your mind and supported that? I would have been swayed to yes. Roger, I, I still wouldn't pay to see the movie. I just don't care about it, and, and you know I don't think it's it's this big F you to the terrorists. I, I don't, and I I totally agree. You know, like you know Sony, uh, you know, or it was actually the theaters who decided not to run the movie. Yeah, they're the biggest cowards. They're, they're the biggest. They're cowards. the ones who 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 did that. But you know, it's it's you know just like a bomb threat being called into a building and stuff. You know, I, I guess they're just taking it seriously in that way. Ask me the question. So with an American flag cape, <laughs> you know, and face paint, I would be that guy. Okay, well, Dan, would you have gone to see the movie? I I would have gone to see it. Uh, I was. Pre-controversy. I'm looking forward to seeing it anyway. If they put it out, I definitely would have gone to see it. But there was a new message this morning from the, the hackers. They mm -hmm. said they demanded that everything related to the movie, including the trailer, be pulled from <laughs> this every is, website that ridiculous. it is on. And they've also is, demanded that, ridiculous. that it never okay, come out on DVD. This? Nick, will you let me finish? Nope. They've also demanded that it will never come out on DVD, pay-per-view, or video on demand, and that mm. the trailer and any related material be pulled from every website or they will so continue Roger, to release material. So, Roger, do we condone material. with this one? No. 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 <laughs> And I, I still, I, I don't think there's any way that this is not going to end up on the internet and being released eventually, one way or another. So is that the answer? Is that the song? I mean, you may, and I, I'm, I, I'll wrap this up because I don't want it to be a heated political debate because it could get there. But I almost feel like you gave the best suggestion: put it in a theater, charge a hundred dollars. It's highly secure. Do we? Are we against look, that scenario? Look, if, if, if they're going to put it in the theaters, they should, you know, raise it, you know. 
have all the proceeds for it go to some charities or something like that. How about that? Yeah, I mean, do we like the idea or just, hey, release it free online. It's now available to anyone who wants to see it and there's, no, we're not making no, a profit you know what? No, it. They should put it in, they should find a theater with the balls to do it and they put it in the theater and charge people to do it like we would normally do. But I don't want to, I just, it wasn't just I want theaters. It was, I want it in theaters right now. I want it in a stadium. It wasn't just it, theaters I, no. that were being threatened though. Uh, employees at Sony, not even higher ups. Hey, employees were dude, being my threatened. My social security number is all over there. Like, so I get it, but I don't care. Like, look, this is going to happen. Like, if we do this, then anyone's, if someone like Roger, it's probably going to be Roger, gets pissed off at Fast and the Furious, someone makes a complaint, they're going to do it. Paramount's already pulling movies. I don't know. We're I think never, North Korea likes Roger in this we're never, First of all, <laughs> why was World Police even back in theaters? To protest this whole thing, which is a dumb protest. That's a different argument. But that's they put it back, and they're scared to put, like... I just I just wish this was over a more important movie. Yes, like, absolutely. I wish this was, I, it, why did it have to be a, a Seth Rogen, James Franco movie that this is... This I is think it's, that this we're is all having this huge do. discussion I think about. Yeah, I mean, isn't movie. that kind of the perfect movie? Because, because you know it what? really does prove... Because like, if this was Oscar-based... It, it shows how ridiculous playing. this is. It but absolutely like, well, does. Well, to be fair, so That's he had true. the same problem with Zero Dark Thirty, if I remember, right? They had a lot of heat, and there was a lot of pressure on that one to release that from the government and everything else, and they stuck to their guns. Mm-hmm. Then they well, released that. And John that was, Stewart was saying just the other night, like his movie didn't like raise any controversy. You know, all the stuff in Iran and everything. Uh, so yeah, it's just like I, why? I well, think this just sets a dangerous precedent. And like anyone, I mean, I could go into details about the groups, but mm-hmm. like anyone could be like. Do we think the government, the multiple, the studios, did, did they handle it right? No. Roger Jovenshine. I, I, I think they did. I think that this, uh, like Roger was even touching on, is the least, um, they're gonna, it, it's a lose-lose situation. This has the least repercussions for them and the least collateral damage. Uh, I, I think Sony, basic, if, if they released it, I, I agree. People would have been saying, you know, they were being greedy. Uh, they were, they, they would have been criticized even if nothing happened in those theaters and stuff. People would have just been saying they're taking risks with fans' lives, and I mean that's not on Sony totally. That's on the theaters as well. But and this isn't like the, Sony would, is getting the brunt of it. Yeah, this isn't the end all be all of like, oh my God, we've lost to the terrorists. It, it's it's uh, literally like, okay, they won this battle. We can still win the war, if you will. Like except this is one no small studio, situation. Except no studio will ever make a risky movie again, especially a risky. It, it seems like you're making a fact off of a situation that hasn't happened yet. Do you guys also they hear, already you know, pulled. It's already started. Steve Carell's North Korea yeah. movie. Um, they did. They did. They did. Yeah, and, it's uh, already happening. And like Clooney, also he wanted to get like everyone to sign this thing, saying they'll stand together, and no one signed it, which surprised ten- the hell out of me. Tensions no, are high. Really. I say let things calm down a little bit, and then we can start looking at Steve Carell's movie again. We can look at hey, let's do a sequel to World Police now. Like just tensions are a little high right or now. Or we throw up middle fingers and play the movie <laughs> everywhere. Like play in Yankee Stadium. But, play it. I mean, well, like right. get security. I will charge me five hundred dollars for a personal security guard. I want to see it. Why don't? Why I'm don't? A stupid American. Why don't we just bomb decision. North? Korea with bombs filled with copies of the movie. Well, it's actually uh, South Korea, I was yeah. reading, is planning to do that. They, Of course, they have a copy of it somehow, and they're planning on sending balloons across, really? across the DMZ <laughs> but, to North Korea so that the movie will... By the way... Ironically, North Korea will be the only country that sees that's this movie. Great. By the way, and this should just be pointed out, I want to see the movie bad now because of all this situation. That doesn't mean I will pirate it. Do not pirate the movie. Do not steal Good it. Good note. And on top of that note, I'm going to give it to Nick. I think Nick had the best suggestion in that... I like the idea of let's if it's two theaters around the country and we overcharge it for safe security, we it's a way to sort of meet both worlds. It's the best option I've heard, and I feel like we, we can't let them scare us to not have art. That's what the, the our country's about, and it does create a simple stuff. But I think George um, Clooney did you just call the interview like, art? <laughs> It's, it's, it's this is thank art. you this because is, that is a real stupid. insult to art. But it really that's, is. That's a low blow. I haven't seen the movie. It, you that's, you that's said it point. was a, a stupid it's movie, the and point. then you corrected yourself and said it's, it's silly. No, it's, it is a stupid movie, not, and we that, know it. Has it has nothing to do with it. It's a bigger issue than that. And I think yeah. what you brought up with Clooney is a good point of like the studios didn't handle it well. Mm-hmm. They all have competing movies coming out on Christmas. They're thinking about, oh, well, if that movie's gone, I'm going to make more money. They don't get hacked. And then, so I think we could have united together stronger in in such a serious issue that I think I I give it to. Nick, you're a little drastic, but I think you made some good suggestions. So Nick, good job. Point to Nick right off the. Wow, is that is that the first time I've ever given you a point in round one? Good for you, man. Yeah, usually usually I'm half asleep with those. All right, round two. <laughs> now the politics are gone. Good. Very. Uh, I have to figure out a way a weird segue to this. One. Yeah, let's transition. Uh, <laughs> so here's get the sillies out. Get the sillies out. Stuff that doesn't matter. So uh, completely unrelated to that. 
Uh, I mean, this movie's not going to make much money, right? The interview, because they're clearly going <laughs> to lose money on it. <laughs> so Majora's Cats on Twitter asks, best movie that bombed at the box office? What right. is the movie that was actually pretty decent that went to the, that had an unfortunate timing, whatever it was, and did not make a single dollar that and was actually justified and should have? None of you picked it, but to me, I think this year probably the best one that was Edge of Tomorrow, where it's like pretty oh, good yeah. movie. Yeah. No one saw it. Mm-hmm. Let's go back even Wait, further. Isn't it kill, die, death. <clears throat> Sorry, no. yeah, live, die, repeat. Now, um, which everyone should go check out that movie. It's a very, it was so actually good. a very Don't fun, it. different, creative movie that no one just they thought, oh, Tom Cruise movie, I don't care, but they should have cared. It was a really ch- a fun, should, different. Tom Cruise is amazing. Yeah, Tom original Cruise movies, movies are, are yeah, we yeah. should support those. But anyway, let's side that. Roger, all yeah. time best movie that uh, you know didn't get the, the service it should have. I mean, I think the obvious answer would be Shawshank Redemption because it did not do well in theaters. But my my personal pick is Big Trouble in Little China. And uh, this was a movie that John Carpenter had high hopes for. Uh, it, it just did not do well. It made about $11 million in theaters and it had a $20 million budget. Um, and since then, it's, re- it's generated a huge cult following. Everybody loves yep. the movie. Uh, it's got one of the greatest lead characters who is actually supposed to be a sidekick, if you've uh, uh, heard John Carpenter talk about it. Jack Burton is actually the sidekick in the movie, and Wang is actually the hero, really. Uh, and he's just this fumbling, all-American, wonderful character. He's he would have seen the interview. <laughs> yes. yes, he would have, absolutely. <laughs> that could be Big Trouble in Little China, too. <laughs> Um, uh, it, it's got amazing characters. It inspired Mortal Kombat. Uh, I, I mean, there's there's so much that uh, that has come out of Big Trouble in Little China, and we've not given it the the credit it deserves uh, uh, back in the day, unfortunately. Nick, uh, I love Big Trouble in Little China too. Uh, mm-hmm. I also love. A movie. What you guys agree on something? Yeah, no, that. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> you sorry. Let I'm me sorry. get my answer. Keep going. Uh, my favorite. Uh, Box office bomb is the uh, Iron Giant. Mm. Uh, came out 1998 ish, nine. It didn't really have a theater release, so it's hard to tell. Vin Diesel's big movie, probably the movie that got him to play Groot more than any other movie before, because he's he's amazing in it, and it's just this great movie. And the thing about the movie is, is if it had a Pixar or a Disney logo in front of it, it would have made like $5 billion. We'd have been having the Iron Giant 3. It's just terrible, terrible marketing. It still really hasn't made a lot of money, but like, Honestly, Disney should buy it and then put it out, and they would make a couple of billion dollars unless someone got upset about it. Uh, um, Nick, it, it, I mean, it, it came out in first of all, it came out in nineteen ninety nine. It yeah. came out in two thousand theaters, so it had a it had a release. It just no, but no, it, but it there just was didn't market. do any business. Yeah, no, right. yeah, yeah, definitely. And like, Big Trouble in Little China had a release too. I mean, like they these movies can have releases, but like, p- think about a Pixar movie. Even then, had four thousand theaters. Like three thousand theaters. Yeah, but well, this is 1999. Yeah, 1999. Yeah, well, how many did Star Wars have in Phantom Menace? I mean, that was like. Well, I'll check. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's I just why think, he's there. I think it's a great kids movie. It, it, that doesn't also pander to kids. It is a great kids it, movie, and it and doesn't. We, like, I think we all would agree. Joe Vinshire, your pick. Um, both good movies. Uh, but I'm gonna go with a, a superhero movie that that flopped pretty hard, and people still like to hate it. But I'm gonna say Daredevil. Now, Daredevil, though, a little bit. Um, Different, even uh, <laughs> even for its time. Wake they, me up inside. Daredevil, if you look at it as like frame by frame, like even a silly scene like the fight in the playground looks like it would have been done exactly how it was shown in a comic book. It was a true to heart comic book movie. Uh, the casting was very good on it. Uh, Colin Farrell's take on Bullseye was was different yet still interesting. And I, I feel like again, like it was a perfect adaptation for what the um, for what the comic book would have looked like, and it looked like that just in the movie. And being able to take a character like Kingpin, uh, a prominently white character, uh, and casting him as uh, Michael or casting Michael Clark Duncan for Kingpin was a bit, um, if I might say, racy at the time, but it, like a good character choice. Like he played Kingpin better than I think anyone else could have played Kingpin. The, the difference between your movie and ours is ours are good. <laughs> well, that's and, also and, like, uh, and that's why it bombed, because well, it's a bad movie. Ben Affleck Big is, Trouble it, in he, China. He's not, I'm sorry, Ben Affleck versus, uh, you know, Kurt Russell? No. It, it, big or, big Trouble in Little China. Yes, I, want, I want you to go on record. So is Daredevil a good film? I, I think so. I, I think uh, if you don't look at it the, the, at the same bar that we put um, other superhero movies, it was a great superhero can movie. I, can I just chime in here? Um, yeah, of course, Dan. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. First of all, Nick, to... to to button up that question, Star Wars Episode One opened on in two thousand nine hundred seventy theaters. Iron Giant opened in two thousand one hundred seventy nine theaters. So you know a few more for Star Wars mm-hmm. Episode One. Daredevil had a production budget of seventy eight million and made 
180 worldwide, it's, 100 million domestic. So not really it, it doesn't. It's not it's as much a, of a bomb, a bomb as as it's a bomb because people hated it. But more <laughs> more importantly, uh, if you watch Daredevil, it does not hold up. I mean, even uh, even putting aside that I don't think it's a good movie, it it just does not hold up how it looks. And it's a big trouble in Little China. Still looks awesome. Does it? Okay, it really big does. Trouble, I love it. Big really trouble does. In China. It's filled with it's filled with Burton neon. Says. It's filled with neon. <laughs> it is it is filled with ridiculous lightning effects. It has a that amazing fight scene it's in the alleyway. It's a classic the, the whole because it's a bad right, Joven, movie. Go. It's not a bad movie. Hold it's on, a bad on. movie. Let Joven reply. It, uh, Big Trouble in Little China is, is a cult classic. People love it because it's it's bad. It, it's one of those things that live no. up like a good bad horror movie kind of kind of situation. I no, it's, it's not a it's not a saying. good bad. It's it's just awesome. <laughs> it, this is one of the best movies. Awesome it, because it's, it's good. It's bad. so entertaining. It's a movie that you can watch countless times. Like if it comes on TV. You will watch it. If it's a rainy day, that is like a perfect rainy Does it day have movie. a blind it's man that saves the day and gets the girl? Shut up, man. Stop okay. him. <laughs> okay, okay. So you're talking bad, bad movies, good, bad movies. That's what they're saying. I'm talking about good, good movie in The Iron Giant. It's just a really, it's the... It's How just much money did they lose on that, Dan? So, I was just looking this up. So, Iron Giant had a production budget of $70 million. It they made, also got Cal Arts students to help with it the movie. Made, it made... <laughs> It made twenty three million dollars, so yeah. they lost about uh, 40, more than forty five mil did. on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big Trouble had a production budget. You were right on, Roger. Actually, it had a production budget of twenty mil. It made eleven point one mil. Yep. And, uh, and, and Daredevil, Daredevil didn't made lose money. money. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. also look at how much these movies have made since their theatrical release. Um, your movie Iron Giant still hasn't made back probably uh, that much. It's uh, still a bomb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, part of me, I, Again, so I can call. I, I let's move on look, to a more exciting battle because I don't. Think this is that exciting? But I'll look what the influence that Big Trouble. But had that's where on I'm thinking others. again. I feel like big, people still like Big Trouble, and it's gotten its just deserve. We're talking about a movie. That Iron Giant still doesn't get any deserves, yep. and mm -hmm. it's like, I, I just don't. I don't know. Daredevil to me isn't a bomb if it did well, and I just you're not selling me on why it was a good movie. But uh, if, between Big Trouble and Iron Giant, aside from the fact that Iron Giant really did lose the money, I think we could all agree. People like Big Trouble in Little China. They know of it. They've watched it later. Whereas yeah. I still feel like people don't under like still underestimate and haven't seen The Iron Giant, which is a great kids movie. That I think, and your point of Disney logo or Pixar movie in front of it, it would but, be a classic. And it, because it didn't, it bombed. But you're talking about you know movies movies that bombed in the theater and stuff, and, and that's that's the key here. I mean, Big Trouble did I, it Iron did, Giant bombed in the yeah, theater. Bo both of them, <laughs> both of them bombed. But which is the your your question is what's the best movie that bombed? And Big Trouble in Little China. I well, I'm basing the best. Uh, I, I'm giving Iron Giant a little bit more credit just because I feel like it still deserve. It's still bombing and it deserves to not be bombed because I think mm -hmm. uh, big. So I'm calling it to Nick again. What is going on? For the record, wow. I agreed what everything Roger said. I agreed everything Roger said. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> All right, round three. Uh, the Hobbit franchise is over. Some Woo! myself Thank included God. would say, hmm. "Okay, good. Let's." Have Points. Peter Jackson do something else. Uh, wow, that was long, right? I mean, that was a long experience. Anybody disagree with me? No. Nope. I haven't seen <laughs> the new Hobbit yet. They're uh, long. So, but yeah, the they're prequels. long. Uh, so that brings up the question of they, they had a movie marathon of The Hobbit that people went to. I'm, I just don't Devin, know how they did it. Our friend Devin Coulson, Devin Coulson did it. Yes. I don't know how he did it. With Devin the original Lord of the Rings, too? No, I think it was just the three just Hobbit, the Hobbit movies, movies. But okay. just that alone, yeah. the yeah. idea that feels like a really wow. big chore. Uh, Korea could get mad about it that. It was homework. It was homework. <laughs> Watching the Hobbit movies was nerd homework. So anyway, it brings up the question from uh, on Twitter from uh, Dahamed, uh, D. Ahmed Hassan, uh, who asks, Best movie marathon. What is that movie that we'd watch, a series of movies that uh, we would watch back-to-back -back and sit and actually want to do, uh, probably in our underwear, eating ice cream, whatever it is. Uh, what's that movie? Let's start with you, Nick. Uh, Rocky, the Rocky franchise. The story of America. Um, <laughs> as he fights not only Apollo... I thought it was Die Hard. Uh, story of America. Okay. <laughs> um, the thing about Rocky is it's it's really one continuous story. As he learns to step up and fight Apollo, and then expectations of himself, and then finally Mr. T, and then finally communism, when he defeats communism. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> the music's theme. playing. Yeah. It's got a great score. It's won uh, some Oscars, best movie. <laughs> and it is the greatest movies ever made. Now, I'm talking about Rocky 1 through 4, and then the end credits for 5, and then Rocky Balboa. 
That is how you watch all the movies. <laughs> all right, Nick. Yeah. You the music, skip the Hubris. You just watch the end credits. A little unfair yeah. advantage with the music, because now it really took me there. Yeah. Well, he's, on the, he's, <laughs> he's, moving moment. he's the senior panelist, yeah, so I guess he gets some he's advantages. Earned it. Uh, all right, Joven, uh, best uh, best uh, movie marathon? Uh, my favorite time of year to do marathon movies is October with some horror movies. I'm a big mm-hmm. zombie fan, so I like to look at uh, some of Romero's classics. Uh, my order and versions of movies that I watch is I start off with Night of the Living Dead, the remake. Then for Dawn of the Dead, I actually go to Zack's Snyder's uh, um, remake of it, and then you have uh, we go to the original of Day of the Dead by Romero, and then I personally really enjoyed Diary of the Dead, uh, the first person shot zombie movie, and then end with um, uh, Land of the Dead because you just can't go wrong with Luigi in a zombie movie. Wow, good, interesting lineup there, Roger. Yeah. What's your call? Uh, I also love Halloween, huge Halloween fan, and uh, watching horror movies is absolutely the way to go. Uh, for me, it's Friday the Thirteenth. Um, several reasons. Uh, first off, all of them, huh? All of them. Uh, not the remake. The, not the remake. But you'd go um, through Jason X and then well, Freddy versus here, Jason. Let the here's, bodies hit the floor. <laughs> here, here's the thing. Uh, there's enough of them that you can have the marathon be as long as you want or as short as you want. Um, they span several decades, which is great uh, because you get this wide variety of things. The first one, it's Jason's mom doing and killing. The second one, you have Spoiler Jason. Spoiler alerts. Yes. <laughs> The second one, you have Jason wearing a sack on his head. The third one, he has the hockey mask. In and you 3D. Have, in 3D. And you have this this evolution of Jason where, like, by the end, he's just like a crazed zombie who's just absolutely unstoppable. Early on, he's more killable. Well, but you also have, wait, wait, wait. You also have some amazing, like, early appearances by, uh, you know, uh, people who are now famous. Uh, Kevin Bacon back in the early days getting stabbed through the throat. You have Crispin Glover doing one of the most incredible dance scenes Agreed. you will ever see. I mean, it is amazing. Uh, you have Jason battling a Can girl. Can you do that dance scene? Huh? Oh, God, I wish. <laughs> you remind me of Crispin Glover. Yeah. You're my sorry. Husband. That is a, that's the best the compliment end. you could give me. Uh, yeah, if you win. You, you, what about the one time when you fought Freddy? That was really good. Oh God, I love it. What's um, a, well, okay, here's okay. the thing about your movies. Uh, my guy could kick both of your guys all of your asses. I don't know. He's the no, I would watch that movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. But Jason, on, I want to go. Rocky. I want to push back a little bit on Friday. I'm not saying it's bad or right. I'm just okay. it becomes kind of comedic. Is that yes. fair to say? Oh, a- absolutely. Like, I mean, I mean, let's think about when Jason goes to hell. It's no longer Jason. That's that's kind of like the cutoff point for me. Like, uh, you can still watch him and be entertained, but I mean, it's not even Jason in that movie, really. It's his heart going into different people, and you don't see him. <laughs> yeah. You don't see him well, till the that, end. That is what was great about 80 franchise horror movies, because you got to see him yeah. go to these uh, crazy lengths. Like, I wanted to see more yeah. horror icons go to New York, for example, or yes. Jason goes to Manhattan. Jason took Manhattan, <laughs> but really, let's be honest, he, he took a boat in that movie. <laughs> and then at the very end, he takes Manhattan, but it's still, it's still absolutely but entertaining. He, like the lost world I, no and reason. and and look let me i will give you all the proof you need that jason can absolutely destroy rocky because in jason takes manhattan he fights a boxer on top of roof and knocks his head off just yeah, like in one, the movie, one, one, out of space. one, one punch you know what rocky did he beat hulk hogan and mr t in the same movie, in the same movie. uh he didn't beat but, hulk hogan he beat thunderlips let's be let's be <laughs> here's fair here's the big thing about your guys's movies though in each one of your movies you're really getting the same thing yes different shots but the same thing a underdog in a boxing match, we're not getting a Zack Snyder movie. Uh, the, well, the the one good Zack Snyder movie, uh, in my opinion. But see, with with my zombie movies here, each zombie movie is a different take on the same event. It's a different point of view. It's showing off different uh, sociological. Different people defending their lives against zombies. Yes. Yes, but <laughs> uh, in a, in a worldwide catastrophe and how it affects everyone and how we like you have uh, commentary on uh, consumerism. You have in Night of the Living Dead. You have uh, at the time this was uh, you had a, a, a strong female and a strong uh, but black the, lead. That was like unheard of. But at see, the time. that's the point. Like a, a movie marathon, you're gonna need to turn your brain off sometimes, and you don't need like all these deep messages and stuff. You you're you're in this for the it's long there run. For the subliminal you might, taking you in. might doze off sometimes, but you're not gonna miss out what happens. And happened then you'll wake up when you, you wake up and screaming. oh, there's Jason murdering somebody again. <laughs> awesome. Well, look, Jason went to outer space for Christ's sakes, and he destroyed an entire. Uh, and let, let, well, let's yeah. real quick back to, back to Rocky. <laughs> okay, not only did you know Rocky. <laughs> win Best Picture, which is the only Oscar winner of the lot. Um, he, that, also, that doesn't matter. He uh, also innovated <laughs> the montage, which is a very important tool. They and they, you know, there was an evolution, which of they the do in every movie. No, and sometimes three movies. <laughs> but 
and had the balls to do three montages in one movie in Rocky IV. Oh, yeah. with the best music to back up those montages, yeah. I will say. Yeah, Survivor. The, the orchestra. The Rocky no Survivor. Easy way out. Yeah. Yep. The Rocky album is my second favorite album of all time. I'm sorry, The Rocky Story is my favorite album of all time. Yeah. Uh, three Six Mafia in Rocky Balboa, which is... I like that song. <laughs> <laughs> Look... They are great stories. You can watch them with your family. It's Christmas time. That's when you want to watch can it. Can you each give me the log line? So what I'm in for, if I were to sit and watch, let's pick the, the four. Let's pick four of them, right, in a row, let's say, because you have four of them. Yeah. I guess you have five of them. I can go six. Quickly, just give me the, the log line. Rocky one, Rocky two, I, just give me, I don't, go, do it okay. quick. The, what the, are, what's my adventure going to be when I sit to watch this binge watch? The underdog gets the chance of a lifetime. Two, the underdog wins. Three, the underdog runs on the beach and then f- races Apollo. Four, the underdog defeats communism. Five, Tommy Gunn. Or Rocky Balboa. You can yeah, Rocky five. Balboa. The underdog shows off that he is a, the true champion of the world. Joven, walk me through your, your uh, marathon. Uh, Night of Living Dead. How the uh, how it all started. Um, uh you have uh, Dawn of the Dead is how we try to survive. Um, then you have, uh, what was the other one? The four, uh, Diary, um, Day of the Dead, how uh, America tries to win against the zombies. Then you have Diary of the Dead, how you would actually survive in the zombie apocalypse. And then finally, how we will settle and live amongst the zombies. Isn't that all just surviving? Yeah, you felt like you were confusing yourself a little bit a few times. It was Roger, a lot of different <laughs> of the day. Roger, right. walk me through five of this marathon. All right. Uh, part one, a mother avenges the wrongful death of her son. Uh, part two, uh, the son comes back to avenge the mother's death. Part four, Crispin Glover dances. And part eight, we see America destroyed as a boxer gets his head knocked off by a zombie killing Jason Voorhees. I'd watch that Shakespeare play. It's not right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got to call it and I got to give it. To Roger. Wow. I think there's I just something this fun about that. And there's there so much variety that you can kind of pick your chooses. Whereas I just I think you, you pick too many of different from different remakes and things. So that's where you I was I was trying to help you there. And I don't know, Rocky, I love Rocky One. I love but I don't know, it starts just He has a robot butler. Yeah. Just that's cool. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. uh, if I'm gonna go silly, I, I think Friday the thirteenth takes it to the to the funner extent. Roger, kudos. Thank you. You're on the board. Do you know how silly it is when they're running on the beach? Oh, I mean, come I lo- on. I love Rocky You can't movies. compare They're that great. to the Crispin no. Glover dance. I mean, it really wow. is one of the best uh, he, what What's great about that dance is he was actually dancing to some completely other music, uh, but they played like this weird... So it's just a bad movie. Uh, of course it's a bad movie. It's a wonderful But is it a bad, bad, bad movie? Is it a bad, good movie? It's a good, bad Round movie. Round four. <laughs> All right, so since uh, Joven, you're with Smosh Games. Yep. You're a gamer. I, I am. assume you I like video games. I've been doing that for a very long time now. You like to talk about them a lot. Uh, they're one of my favorite things. Don't talk about them on first dates uh, most of the time. <laughs> Don't take first dates to closer the movie, too. <laughs> well, we thought since you're here, it might be fitting to ask a question. We've had a lot of people ask us. Uh, Abraham DeBose, sorry if I said that wrong, on YouTube. Whoa. YouTube comments, we also read those, too. Uh, what video game should be made into a movie? Lot to choose from all through There's the eras of video games. I want to hear what is going to be the coolest video game that's not been done yet that we should be having Hollywood make immediately. And Joe and Trevor, we got to start with you. Yeah, now this one's pretty simple. Like, obviously, you have like the AAA titles that you're like, oh my god, make a Halo movie or make a Legend of Zelda movie. Okay, no. The, the smart thing is stay away from those movies because we've gone through that adventure. We have been, um, the, uh, we've, we've been Link. We, he doesn't talk. That doesn't make a good movie. No one will like how it, how it becomes. Uh, whereas a movie like Mass wait, wait, Effect. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I don't even interrupt. There can't be a good Zelda movie? There really? can't be. Well, because no one, you won't be able to make everyone happy. You have a main protagonist who doesn't speak. You To go through an entire story with having a character that doesn't speak. You don't think they'd adjust that? Yeah, no. probably. Did, did, it did it work for the cartoon? Did it work for the cartoon? What cartoon? No. Yeah, I, was, the, the, I always didn't like that cartoon. No. I always preferred the Mario Brothers cartoon. Well, that's because the Mario Brothers had the event with swing your arms from side <laughs> to side. I mean, that's that's going to overtake Link, of course. They could also Sorry, <laughs> subfight. Maybe we'll save that yeah. for another episode. But anyway, keep going on. Uh, mass, uh, yeah. you, have to, you have to choose a game that has a huge backstory, has a huge lore, st- something that hasn't even really been touched in the game itself, which is Mass Effect. Now, you don't want to go with the Shepard storyline because you are Shepard. The way I played Shepard is definitely the way, uh, is different than the way you guys would have played uh, Shepard. So you want to have something like the first Contact Wars. Now this, just concept <laughs> alone, when you have Earth finding out that they can travel through the galaxy and coming across aliens that are already fighting for, for space. Now, America having that we can conquer everything mentality is like, no, we're in the fight 
right now we can take over but they're like the like the underdog in the battle being able to find their place in this galactic senate if you will uh of like a hierarchy of, of intelligence and and dominion and, and just like Is this the, phantom in us? wait the minions <laughs> are in it no, Dominion, <laughs> but we can put the minions in it because they make any movie yeah, fantastic. They right, will Roger. sell a movie. They will sell Roger, a movie. what's your video game movie? Uh, my video game movie is The Secret of Monkey Island. Um, this was an adventure game by LucasArts, uh, uh, and it was basically the first time we ever saw comedy in a video game. It has incredible writing by Ron Gilbert. It is just absolutely hilarious. It's about a wannabe pirate who's just basically trying his best to become one and... Uh, you know, solve these mysteries. And along the way, you know, he, he meets all kinds of hilarious characters, guy with two hook hands, meat hands. Uh, he, he meets Stanley, the uh, the used car salesman, the used boat salesman, and this used like crazy moving arms and uh, very fast talking. Um, it also introduced uh, the ghost pirate LeChuck, which is great. And uh, Pirates of the Caribbean basically stole a lot from Monkey Island, uh, is what I've heard. And uh, they, they've always kind of hoped that they could eventually get a, a, a Monkey Island movie made because it, the comedy is so much better in those films. And, uh, uh, I mean, in those games. But uh, it also introduced the the idea of insult sword fighting, which I absolutely love. Uh, as Guybrush is training to uh, become a pirate, he they, they have these sword fights, but they don't actually hit each other. They use insults, and whoever uses the better insult wins the battle and uh i just oh, think all this like stuff like us yeah, yeah. that, wasn't the, that <laughs> exactly. wasn't the first video game with with, with comedy remember it, avoid the noid in the nintendo or what about leisure suit larry yeah this yeah. was say, back back in those days it was from the same crl lucas arts arts days but this was known as like the funniest game made back then it was just absolutely incredible nick right, what's yeah. your choice uh capcom's final fight a, a story about a 300 pound ripped mayor played by Dave Bautista uh, who has to rescue his kidnapped daughter. Would and you have the rock play him? He just said Dave Bautista. Dave, Dave Bautista. Uh, I'm surprised. And, I then his, have the rock. and the girlfriend's boyfriend played by Chris Hemsworth who's also a ripped karate dude and Tony Ja as playing Guy as just another dude who can beat the shit out of people. Mm -hmm. And all the movie is is kind of like uh, The Raid where it's just one street after another of them beating the hell out of street punks and just kicking ass. John Carpenter directs and it's just like take the fight, the side-scrolling fight game, and put it to movie where they're just beating the hell out of people. All right, I gotta be honest. Nick gave me a really good pitch. I, I, you guys need to give me a good pitch. So cast it. Who's directing it? What's oh, the geez. what's the wow? How is it gonna look? Uh, Two, three, five. Uh, like. Like, Otherwise, Nick's gonna keep talking. Yeah, so no. Once one of you like, is it's ready, it's gonna be great. Well, when, uh, Batista does a spinning pile driver and just breaks some dude's neck, and then. Uh, Let's see. Uh, you ready, Joe? Stacy Keebler. Let's go with uh, Stacy Keebler and anything. Yeah, I'm gonna. You, Stacy you Keebler. Oh, never mind. I thought you said Stacy Keebler. All right, let's go on to something that matters. J.J. Uh, Abrams directing uh, the the Mass Effect movie. This man knows space. He knows adventure. He has. Tell knows me like I don't dialogue. know the game. Sell me on this uh, this this the story and the character. And who's going to be the character? Humanity has now moved past Earth, finding themselves in the middle of a galactic civil war. Ooh, sound familiar? Did that work once Phantom in history? Menace. Guess what? It can happen again. This time, humans versus aliens versus even more aliens. Lasers all over the place. Who plays the main guy? Who cares? There's aliens and lasers and conquering over planets. Yeah, Phantom Menace. You're, yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. Phantom Menace. Yeah. Is it like Phantom Menace? How is it not like Phantom Menace? <laughs> um, better acting, better story, um, uh, and no Lucas. Sounds like a Lucas movie. <laughs> Roger, pitch me your movie. Um, I, I would like to see the Coen brothers uh, direct uh, Secret of Monkey Island. I, I think it would be. What, what, what's it wonderful. sound like? What's it? Um, uh, I'm trying to think who who would be a good good uh, uh, person to play Guybrush. Uh, possibly Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell actually. Uh, I could see him uh, pulling off that role uh, really well because he was also great in movies like Stranger Than Fiction. I don't know the role. Uh, Tell me. So Will Ferrell doing what? He is Guybrush Threepwood, this wannabe pirate who 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 thinks he's great, but actually just fumbles a lot. Uh, it's kind of like him in Step Brothers, uh, if you if you appreciate Step Brothers, uh, that kind of a movie. Um, you I lost me a little there. Is going to be wearing Dockers since he's a mayor and a leather strap on his chest, shirtless, just beating the hell out of punk kids. Also, Tony Jaws there just kicking the shit out of But people. there's no story. Oh, yeah, it is. What? Rescuing the kidnapped uh, daughter. You, oh, we so, are so you're a fan of Menace, and you're basically the Warriors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. 
Mm -hmm. well, I'm, it's like the I Warriors. Mean, don't, you're helping them then. No, I like I like the Warriors, but I, uh, Warriors is like is just like Mad Max. That's a movie that I actually would I think I think could be remade really well. Pirates of the Caribbean is is that? No, movie. it's not. No, it's, it's close it enough. is really not. Daniel Bautista with the mustache, really daggers, really daggers, leather strap, beating people with pipes. So, right, Pirates of the Caribbean is about a, a drunk basically who who's going around you know, uh, doing it, all that. Uh, he's only a side character. It's about Orlando Bloom who's learning to become a pirate to save. Here's my here's my problem. Yours just sounds like Star Wars. Tell me why it's not. Star Wars. Your sounds like Land of the Lost a little bit, which is making me a little less exciting. Will Ferrell because exploring around an island. I don't lost. know. Oh. So, which was terrible. And mine's about a three hundred pound man. <laughs> and yours rip. is just I've seen it before with no, the raven. What? How is it not? Give me a. St how is it different than the raid? Which I can just. I'd rather just watch the raid than Chris Hemsworth trying to do the raid. Uh, how how so why one last shot here All quickly right. so uh everyone loves a good underdog movie now we're taking the underdog story and moving it to a more galactic level you take humans who who have From now Luke found skywalker their, yes who have now found their way into outer space and find that there's life out there there's technology beyond their own being able to adapt it and utilize it to now make their place in the history that is outer space against other aliens who are fighting amongst themselves now for them to join the fight and say no hey this is our space as well we will not let you take over our space it's the underdog level on on a, a level that we can't even fathom because it's it's outer space you have so much more that can is be is it guarding the galaxy in tone with comedy or is it a little bit more serious uh, it's Star a little Trek more, more serious. it's a little more serious but then you you get those little those little like nods to the camera where it's like oh that was a funny smart moment i like that it's okay. not okay okay yeah. I, I can visualize look, it roger your look, turn the best way i can explain monk allen is think of a guy who is completely unqualified being thrown into a situation he has real no control over. It's Big Trouble in Little China, but pirates. And that is awesome. And I want to see that movie. Okay, Nick? Imagine the guys from Predator in a diehard situation while the Warriors is happening. <laughs> Warrior! Yeah. Come and then they have to take yay. on bad guys on bad guys to rescue Hagger's daughter. And it will we be have. I just love that nobody born after 1990 will know what he's talking about. <laughs> Devin will. Um, uh, uh, Secret of Monkey Island was re released uh, not too long ago as a special edition uh, that they completely redid the artwork for. All uh, right, so I'm, I'm giving people points. After 1990 will. I, I said, I'm going off your pitches, and there's two of them I want to see, so that's how I'm going to base my points for the system. I kind of want to see that one. That one sounds kind of fun, and I kind of want to see Nick's. So I'm going to give Nick and Roger, uh, sorry, not Roger. Yes, yes Nick, Roger. And Nick That's and right. Joven Nick Shire. and Roger. Roger. No, Roger. I'm on the board, baby. I'm on the board. All right. Nick has on. way too many points uh, in the show gotta, already. We're going to breeze through some more. This is Round wrong. five. The new Annie reboot is opening this weekend. I'm ready. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, Annie. We're all excited for Annie, right, guys? Did you get your tickets? Hey, if Korea what? was saying I'd we can go to Annie, I would go see Annie right now. So uh, Hot Shadow on Twitter asks, Hot Shadow, that's a good one. What does that mean? Is that a game reference, or is he trying to be... Smooth Silk? Yeah. Is he a radio DJ? Uh, Hot Shadow, best, coming at you from 96.5. Best movie musical from Hot Shadow. Uh, what's the best movie musical? Now, I want to... I, I, I know what they're going to say in advance, because we can prepare for the show. And I, I want to make it clear. I want the best movie with original music. It doesn't have and to we be are Broadway sticking to our revivals. Guns. Yeah. I've warned you all. Some of them made some cause. I, I, so I, I've given them the time to reconsider where my points. bias is going to go. Uh, that said, let's go through it. Roger, best movie musical movie with music, original <laughs> singing music. The the best, best musical. movie musical uh, is Popeye, and the this is a classic. They actually built an entire town for this, and it still stands today. It's in uh, Malta, and uh, it, it's called Popeye Village. They actually built this entire thing, and uh, uh, the music in it is wonderful. Uh, it's it's got these hilarious songs like Bluto, Bluto just talking about how he's beating the crap out of everybody. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know what I mean. And uh, you you have uh, Ray Walston uh, as Popeye's father, uh, just you know bitching about kids and about how you know you get them a lot of toys, and what do they give you? They give you a lot of noise. Na 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 na. na. It's great, uh, and. You also have just these amazing, the the amazing sets, all these wonderful characters. What song uh, do I Wimby? know from that movie? Because none of those are. I'm um, Popeye the Sailor Man. Oh, that doesn't sound like good. Is there a <laughs> I, song, I just original said, uh, song from the? Uh, I don't remember. You, you have, you have uh, Shelley Duvall. You know it from a different movie, probably Punch Drunk Love. Oh but... yes, the shit. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. 
Uh, and he's large. All right. That's right. I do remember now. I remember the movie. It's been a while. Yeah, it's it's, it's not easy to, to, to watch these days. Uh, Nick. All right. My favorite movie musical is important for two reasons and a very one special reason. Uh, the first one is it features uh, William Daniels, Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World. What movie is, are we talking about? 1776. About the uh, the musical about the congressional hearing. Of <laughs> about the a, year. Yeah, is about it, them. Uh, it's historically the, accurate too. They were singing it, the entire time mm-hmm. about the uh, Declaration of Independence. It stars uh, William Daniels, Mr. Feeney, for, as John Adams, Feeney! and also when it came out in 17, uh, 1972 and out. when <laughs> Richard Nixon saw an early cut of the movie, he, he made them. He forced them to cut a scene from the movie because he deemed it it was too gay. So this musical sounds was, like some North Korea would do. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> it's very pertinent to the situation, and uh, it feels like. And they did because Tricky Dick had some issues with you know being uncomfortable with it. And it was man, you're really playing to our audience. Yeah, <laughs> we just keep going. We keep going further back in time. Yeah, I mean, I don't even, I don't know anything you're talking about. Let's go to Jovenshire. See, I'm a man of the people. The 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 person that asked this question asked, "What is the favorite musical?" Uh, so you have to go with a musical. And I'm gonna say Rent. Now you asked, "What is the best movie with original music?" All right. Empire Strikes Back has original music in it. You said nothing huh. about singing, singing the lyrics. Singing music. Well, at, at, the, at the presentation of the question, uh, the question was, what is the best musical? Uh, Rent did a great job adapting a three-hour long musical play meant for a theater with an intermission and uh, translated it very well to the big screen. Now, in this, yes, you, not, some of the dialogue was spoken, not necessarily sung, and that worked for the audience. The audience uh, now was introduced... Uh, this movie was introduced to an audience that maybe didn't see Rent before, so now it was easier to take in because it wasn't just two hours of just singing. It was a, a great telling of a specific time, uh, a specific generation, and it, it, the songs are catchy, the songs you still know, and it makes you cry at the end. Um, well, t- to Oof. be more accurate, we were posed with the question, what is the best uh, movie uh, musical, but that was not based on a Broadway look, or, I lost. or any actual musical. Look, I lost. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but but look, I you, but, Nick. but Popeye Popeye has has the best. It's also the best movie of the three. Uh, you you see Popeye. Uh, he he gets forced to eat the spinach, and then this giant arm comes out from underwater, punches Bluto so hard he actually turns yellow and goes swimming away like a coward. Um, you also have an octopus underwater, which I believe was the octopus. How many songs that was are in that movie, Dan? Can you fact check for me? And Popeye. Oh, there, I yeah, I also there's a lot. I never thought I'd say this. I'm going to stick up for Richard Nixon a little bit. <laughs> First of all, it, about- it, it wasn't when he saw the movie. It was when he saw the production of the musical at the White House. And I can't find any reference of him saying that something was too gay. Look up cool, it, considerate it, men. It, it, yeah, they said that he they said that he thought it was a criticism of the presidency and the criticism I mean, of the he, government. Nick I, lost. I don't see. Let's any, not, I don't, let's not no, fact check it I can't believe we said I'm going to stick up for Richard Nixon a little bit here and now, say I can't find any he evidence of the gay thing. Now, in the show. looking at Popeye versus Rent, uh, if you're looking at the best of something, so like who what, would have thought that fight would ever happen? Yeah. That's the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail. Popeye the musical versus Rent. I don't think that'll be our thumbnail. You have to look at at the best, like. What stands uh, the test of time? Popeye, though, good movie. Uh, you can't remember any songs from it outside of the main theme song that only us I older I absolutely generation. remember so many. Oh, of no, Lion King. Lion no. King's the best. Yeah, no one picked that. Or, <laughs> yeah. or South Park. I think Or King. Singing in the Rain. Or any of there the are classic, classic movie musicals, music of musicals the last that no one years. picked. Well, I'm just talking about a movie that, that I grew up on. And I mean, you have Robin Williams, who was perfect as Popeye. He and did a great job. He really was perfect. It's it's a fun story. It's a weird huh? movie. It's a we- it is it a is weird a movie. Weird movie. And I don't remember. Mine's so- I'd go South Park easily. All right, easily. you got the point. Uh, <laughs> No, you um, got the point. But I just don't remember the music. And then I don't think Rent was a good adaptation. I think the Broadway musical was good. The movie wasn't that good. Uh, so I'm, I can't give anyone a point. I, I'm just trying really story, hard. singing in the I rain. I can't give you that, anybody yeah, a point. Give me, give me the point. Uh, I've made the best argument here fine, for, for Popeye. Wait, 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 give me the best point. Right, I had a good right, argument. Look, I actually picked a musical. I, that's so... Uh, <laughs> you be honest. Which of Popeye these three movies? Popeye wins out of the three. Popeye Thank you. Wins uh, That's all I'm saying. But very begrudgingly. No, no clapping. No, no applause. clapping. Boo. Play that American music boo? again. Play that inspirational music. I want music. the boo right now. Guys, what's our favorite Marvel movie? <laughs> That's for all three of you. That was a terrible fight. 
<laughs> hey, you guys asked the question. It's not our fault. All fault. I clarified several times, and that was a we're getting an all Marvel movie next. Yeah, week. that's the thing. Hey, we, we stuck to our like, guns. You we never stuck do to our that. Guns. You you told them they were Boom. terrible answers, and they're I like, "Yeah, them. they are." I they warned them, them, and I tried that, to coach you. Let's have this debate sucked. again next year when I can choose Anna Kendrick's uh, the last pitch five perfect. years. I would have taken pitch perfect over any of those. Okay, I would have taken. You should have. You should have joined the debate over that. Anyway, and that's not a good move. Look, travesty. All right. <laughs> All right, way better interesting fight. Coming in from Matu... Uh, oh, I cannot... I'm sorry, dude. That's a really hard name to say. Uh, Matusos... Sus, uh, I can't do it. Susu <laughs> Studio? It. It's, it's, on the yeah. it's on the screen. It's on the screen. Kudos to you, sir. <laughs> I do not want to butcher your name. I'm not laughing at your name. I'm but laughing at myself, right? I can't believe... I don't know how to do that. Uh, <laughs> My uh, can move. Best, best Ian McKellen movie. Um, what do we think, guys? Hobbit franchise just wrapped up. Uh, he's been in several franchises. Uh, mm. What's the best movie? We're not talking character or franchise. What's his best Single movie? movie. Yeah. Nick. Uh, at Pupil. Uh, Brian Singer's At Pupil came out in 1998, where he actually plays a uh, Nazi who's now hiding in America under a different alias. His real name is Kurt Dershner. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just, it's him and Brad Renfro, and it's this really creepy character study, and it's like this just two guys playing mind games with each other, and it's it's brilliant. And it's the movie that p- kind of like re-put him on the map. I mean, God and Monsters too, but App People was the one that got him Magneto. It was the one that got him Lord of the Rings, and it's what started, it's what put um, Ian McKellen into the ether. It's what, if it didn't, if he didn't do this movie, there would be like Sean Connery as Gandalf or something terrible. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Josh. I'm sorry, uh, Jovenshire. Um, I'm gonna go with um, the first X Men movie. Now, to play a uh, a great villain, you have to bring up a side of the villain that people can relate to, almost see them as a victim. And Eden McKellen brings like some of the best uh, casting that I've seen in a superhero movie, next to someone like Hellboy as Magneto. Um, he's a Magneto's a character that or you Daredevil. feel for, uh, or Daredevil. Uh, Magneto's a character that you feel for. You understand where he's coming from, and you honestly kind of believe in his in his message, just not in the way that he he perceives it or the way that he he takes action. And to have a, a villain that you you love and hate at the same time is not an easy task. And this is something that Ian McKellen did. Perfectly, perfectly. You see why Professor X is still Magneto's friend. That's not easy to do. Yeah, Roger. Okay, uh, I believe uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, uh, is by far his, his best work. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, App Pupil kind of puts him on the map, but I, I think Lord of the Rings uh, as Gandalf the Grey is what uh, really, uh, that's that's his, his real big uh, uh, role. Uh, he, he has said himself uh, that Gandalf the Grey is a lot cooler than, uh, you know, Gandalf the White because uh, he, he's more interested in, you know, he, he's having fun with the hobbits. He, you know, he's partying with them, he's smoking, uh, he's in bars and everything, and he, he's in more danger. So his character is actually more threatened and, and less confident uh, than, than, you know, Gandalf the, the White. But um, uh, the other thing about it is Ian McKellen himself has been interviewed about who would win in a fight between Gandalf and Magneto, and he said Gandalf, hands Obviously, down, would win down, and he has thousands Kirk of years of experience. Gandalf doesn't have yeah. any metal on yeah. him. What's Magneto hey, this is do? movie fights, Josh. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Look, and Kirk Bissender would trick both of them into killing each other, and then, like, you know. Wasn't <laughs> Gods and Monsters really the movie that put him on the map before uh, people... I- I think, it's, I think it's at people. I really think it's at well, people. Well, a lot of, a lot of people liked him in a Six a Degrees of Separation. That He yeah, got no. a lot of praise for that, too. Uh, also, but like the, beyond that, it's same just, year. I think it's his... Mm-hmm. Really? Gods yeah, and Monsters? Gods and Monsters yeah. at people, same year. Mm-hmm. Gods and Monsters came out. But I think the performance... He was really the... Con- and then when was for- Fellowship? Man, he's uh, X-Men. Uh, it went, uh, the, X-Men so was Gods and Monsters and at people in 98. X-Men was in 2000. Fellowship was in 2001. Wow, those are really good three years. Yeah, no. So at people, like to me, I think... All great performances, but the performance that like he honestly got robbed in, w- like winning at some awards, was at people. That was his best performance. Like, and while good in those movies, I also think- random fact was the short story that was in the same novel as Shawshank Redemption and The Stand. Yep, uh, Stephen King. Yep. Uh, uh, no, not so, as good as those two movies. No, no. Ian McKellen was doing great movies before Act People, though you can argue that this was put Act on the map. Act People kicked open the door and was like, hey, I'm but, this guy who... But these, it's not his best. Though these know, other know, movies... By sure it is. By far it is mm-hmm. his best. Uh, though these other, uh, like, our movies followed Act People, how do we know that Act People is actually what helped him get these roles? Like, he had a great career well, he did with before. Brian yeah, I mean, here's, here's and, the and problem. he said, if I... I 
wanted Magneto to play him after doing that pupil. So here's my problem, right? Help me, because this is really tough. This is a tough one to judge. They're all mm-hmm. great performances. He's a great actor. I, I'm, I'm Now I am going to have to change this, the question a bit, which is, sorry, but Gandalf and Magneto, I just think way too, even if, take away the franchise, even just a single movie, just such more iconic characters that so nuanced and for a character role, I think he brought so much gravitas and weight to it. I'm just, I'm being honest, I'm ruling you out for that just fact alone of trying to then pick somebody out of this mess. You don't want an app pupil thumbnail. App pupils, <laughs> uh, it was fine, but I also just didn't think it was that great a film. He was good in it. I think it's great, but I can't, compared to his role as Gandalf and his role as Magneto, I just think they both I just don't think he would have those roles. So I apologize. I'm just being clear. Just, just, That's just, why. But it was a good fair. good, fair fight. So now I'm, 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 and feel free to now, I'll invite you to chime in here if you'd like. Magneto. Uh, <laughs> yes. He Magneto, said because he's my enemy. Magneto We're versus enemies. Gandalf is where I do <laughs> think is an interesting battle here and Let i think pick. you said something really great of it's he did uh, where's there was that nuance if he played the villain and the friend which mm-hmm. I, I do think right now is, is the best point but i want to give you some time to fight that what, what was the nuance in, in for gandalf for, for acting just that performance uh, the the acting for him is sacrifice uh he, he's he's not only you know helping trying to help these hobbits uh make it their way he stands up uh, against that giant monster and and falls and and tells them to fly, you fools. Uh, and it's it's also one of his most quotable roles. I mean, who hasn't said "You shall not pass"? I mean, that is Ian McKellen's defining role said, of Ke- his career. I've said it Kendall really Senator is. Senator yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> See, and that's where I'm Tom struggling. Has a wicked because if we go defining role, <laughs> mm-hmm. I think you win. If we go best performance, it's X Men. I think it's, it's X-Men. Magneto. It's the first so X-Men. I'm really wrestling here because can I point out that McKellen was nominated for an Oscar? for fellowship. Thank you. He was. Yes. Not Thank you. Best supporting okay. actor, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, it's... Uh, it's then I should have run the walk for Rocky one. It is easier to play a hero than it is a villain, and especially a villain that has so many layers. And I think, like I mentioned before, trying to pull out that performance and make you feel for a villain is not something that's that's easy to do. Playing Gandalf, it's easy. Like, he's mm-hmm. the the mentor to this fellowship. I, uh, I it, think you're discrediting the writers by, by saying that. I mean, if, if you have good writing, you can play an excellent... And you have a good actor, you can play an excellent hero that people can feel for. Same for an excellent bad guy that uh, people can feel for. I'm going to get hate for this, but Uh, I mean, well, I'm I'm sorry. I'm playing my cards a little bit too much, but I'm looking at the question again. Best Ian McKellen movie. It's not performance. It's best movie. Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. It's Fellowship of the Ring versus X-Men. So I'm going to upset somebody by picking one of these, which movie's better. But, and I'm going to say it. I thought Fellowship was kind of boring. It got better with Return of the King and Two Towers. And so that's where yeah. I'm stuck on I, like why why was that one the why was that the best movie that, over X Men which I do think helped define superhero movies better, in a way that has the better Gandalf uh, performance. Uh, but it's best it, Ian McKellen movie is what's on here, and I'm trying to get it, some it's sort the of the best Ian McKellen movie. Uh, he he said it himself. That's his favorite movie. Uh, it, it's also. Um, uh, this is the one that sets up the entire story. Uh, this, this, but as this, a st- it I, establishes I'm not the entire the adventure. Trilogy. The, the trilogy is amazing. As a movie, I found that one to be not as, as, as fulfilling. I had to wait two years to see where it went. As a standalone movie, oh. I had a problem with Fellowship is what I meant by that. Here's comment. the thing. Here's the thing. And this is me coming from it. Fellowship is a better movie than X-Men 1. He does a better performance. X Men Two, but is, is the I, best agree. I agree. Movie, I agree. So that's where I'm struggling. But so, I gotta, so the, the best, best movie. movie. Fact checker. Is this best movie or best Ian McKellen performance? I. I what do you well, think? What, what's the wording of the well, question? The, the, best Ian McKellen movie. Right. Is not the performance. I, 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 wait Thank a second. You. That is uh, a very strong ensemble cast. Is that an Ian McKellen they movie? They both are. It is. They both are. Yes. Well, it's it's you have you're sharing now like nine different very important roles. Where in X Men you're looking at three nine. different. He has. Has more on his shoulders There's in this movie than, than he does it, in, awards, in the awards, of awards, in awards. Hold on, yeah. awards and and fandom aside, mm-hmm. why is fellow get one last chance for you? Why is Fellowship the best movie? And then I'm gonna ask you, why is X Men a better movie? Uh, why why Fellowship is a better movie? Uh, again, Fellowship as a standalone film is better than X Men. As a standalone one. film, it, it's just this incredible epic adventure. It, it it sets it does set the tone for everything. But as as an individual movie, you you see these hobbits uh, just tasked with this in, incredible uh, uh, responsibility that they have to go out and, and uh, take care of. Gandalf kind of pulls them all together. You have all, you uh, get to meet all the elves. Uh, you have them going in into the mountains uh, uh, against. You have the other wizard. Uh, I mean, there's there's so much complexity to this movie, and it is an incredible adventure. And it does end with Gandalf being sacrificed, and and you are left wondering what happened to him. 
Uh, Joven Shire. And that's it. Uh, in Lord of the Rings, you, uh, you for a good story, you need a beginning, middle, and end. No one says, hey, my favorite Lord of the Rings movie was Fellowship of the Ring. It's Two Towers, I, or... I, it, I, I or uh, Joven, my favorite Lord of the Rings movie was Fellowship of the Ring. Thank you. Okay, I'm in Thank the wrong you. audience then. Mine wasn't, uh, but three against but, two. So you have uh, Fellowship of the Ring is just the beginning of a story, whereas the first X-Men has um, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And let's look at just that's like... one big setup for the let, second. Let, yeah, exactly. Let him, let, him, let him finish. Now, even if, if when you look at the... Um, um, oh, was it the second movie or was it the first movie? Um, which one did it? And you just feel for. <laughs> I, 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 that's no, what I'm here for. So you you um you feel for uh, the different characters. You you're on more of an adventure. Whereas Fellowship of the Ring, it's it's one of three. It is. It cannot be you, seen by itself. X Men is one of three it, as well, it is and a you feel for the characters. It is a trilogy. You absolutely feel for the characters. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going to say violence for you, but I'm about to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> but look. Look, at least in X Men, yes, there's a trilogy, but you <laughs> have three separate calm. stories. You have one, one overarching. He's story. just asking one, one story here. Uh, Yo, straight up, I think it's separate movies. From Lord of the Rings, Fellowship sit down. of the Ring. If you, if you sit down and you watch Fellowship of the Ring, okay, it now is I need to see movie. Two Towers. Now there's I need to no see Return of the King. It. it is the Whereas better movie. Whereas you can see X Men and stop after the first one and be like, that was a great story. All right, all right, I'll agree with you, but I think Roger takes the point. It was very close. It was a good one, but I do think it just—it's a combination of it is. They're both probably equally good movies. There's a Ray and Ian but McKellen, Ian McKellen has the weird thing is the weird more thing is iconic, better performance in X Men. He even got, Fellowship is a better movie. He even got so tattoos. With the but question, then I would argue he got Gandalf tattoos probably on his made shoulder. Icon, more iconic Ian McKellen. Just Him and the cast—they all got Lord tattoos. It was Lord really the tough. Tattoos. Now, now Roger the, won the fight. Yes. It was really about the fight. Toad has You got a little confused on which movie was which. So well, that now was the where point, I wavered, and Roger takes it. Now Good the job. point has and, been given. Uh, I I do agree. Mandy I, is a better movie than X Men. I have a minor correction. And now now I'm going to uh, kill Nick. <laughs> First, I, we should also clear. Roger and Nick are tied at three three, and Joe oh, has one. One. Oh, I'm still. Uh, Andy, I have a minor correction. You got your Stephen King stands a little mixed up. You said that it's it was fine, the Dan, same novella as The Stand. It was the same novella as Stand by Me. Yeah, Stand by Me. I knew that. I I know you knew that. Stand by Me is such a good movie. Stand by Me and Shawshank are in that fort. It's what's it called? The it's it's Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption at People. The Body, which is Stand by Me, and then there's one called The Breathing Method, which has actually never been adapted. Someone should do it. Stephen King played Vern and Stand by Me. All right, we we got to wrap these up. We don't run out of time here. Uh, rumors burn, came out. Uh, rumors came out that uh, this week uh, that um, it's too late for Spider-Man to be in Civil War, uh, but he mm. might be in Infinity War because we we we've heard through the grapevine, uh, through news sources that got the sources illegally, <laughs> but uh, we've heard that Sony is trying and talks with Marvel. We're speculating now. If they did that, who would we want? to play Spider-Man if the rights were... were sorry, thank you. <laughs> round 7. Uh, that was a terrible setup. Thank you, G. Uh, round 7, Fight 7. Who should uh, play Spider-Man if the rights revert back to Marvel and they do hit the reset button and decide to start it over? Who do we think should it be? Joven, we're starting with you. Um, I think, actually, uh, I want to stick with Andrew Garfield. I, I do think he was kind of robbed in the Amazing Spider-Man movies because of bad writing. He plays a great socially awkward nerd that, though maybe good-looking, still like has a hard time like getting those sentences out, but then can play the opposite side of the coin as Spider-Man and have this new confidence and wittiness about him that that's, that, that's like the hero within. Uh, I think that he brings a lot to the table, and just, we never really got to see the true potential uh, of Andrew Garfield in a role of Peter Parker and Spider-Man because of bad moves. writing. Yeah. Roger. Uh, I, I don't think Andrew Garfield uh, is the right role for it because he, do, he does look too much like a model and Spider-Man should be like this awkward, nerdy kind of a guy. I, 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 that's what I want. I thought Toby was a much better uh, Peter Parker. Um, but I, I, I think uh, you want someone who's awkward, but also has good comedic timing. Uh, I think that's really important, and I, that's why I would pick someone like Adam Scott. And I, I know 40. it's, a, I know it's an unusual, I know it's an unusual, but he still looks young. He does, and he looks uh, like a young thirty-five. But, but my, my answer is two part. Uh, I, I, I think Adam Scott would be perfect for Peter Parker, but I also think that The Rock would be the best for Spider-Man in the costume. Wait, The Rock? The Rock. Are oh, we God. serious? I, I rock. <laughs> What? He's got a point. How does uh, that? How yeah. would their bot? Is this face off? No, no. My real answer is my real answer is Tony Ja. Uh, I wanted to see him uh, be actually. Okay. He's he's an incredible martial artist. I, I mean, so why doesn't Tony Jaw just do it all? What, what's with this body switch? Uh, uh, is that I, unfair to Tony Jaw? Hey, dude, just put this mask on and do your stuff. But we're gonna put Alex hey, Scott well, in the face. Well, okay, let me. Let, hold on, hold on. Okay. No, no. Uh, 
first off, uh, he, he doesn't speak the the best English, as I recall. Uh, on top of that, he's not known, you know, for acting. He's he's known for his martial arts uh, skills, and you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, I mean I don't know the facts on this. Maybe you can check if there have been stunt guys in the Spider-Man costume for certain scenes in the previous. Oh movies. yeah, there has, I assume. Yeah. So, yeah. Funny enough, Tony yeah. Jaws is going to be in Furious Seven. Interesting. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, that doesn't make me want to see Furious Seven. Uh, <laughs> Nick, who would you pick? I'll, I'll uh, talk to you. I, I think about get that. rid of Peter Parker. We've seen five movies with Peter Parker. Let's go with the Ultimate Spider-Man's Miles Morales, and the perfect person to play him is. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Donald Glover. Donald Glover is funny. Uh, he can do drama. He's got charisma. He's like. He, he, like this is like this perfect role for like a young Will Smith, and he can play a different Spider-Man. Miles but not Morales. Jaden Smith. Thank right? you, not no. Jaden Smith. No, no. Okay. no. But oh like, God. no. I think he, this would be perfect. I think he would fit in better with Miles Morales' character. Would fit in much more in the Marvel Cinematic Universe since it's so based on the more of the Ultimate Comics uh, version. I just think that would be better. He'd be funnier. Andrew Garfield's had two movies. Your movie, your idea is insane. Um, <laughs> Like a, no. I don't want to see a forty-year-old Adam Scott and a guy who looks nothing like him playing Spider-Man. I just also think it's kind of offensive to Tony Jaw. Like, hey, just only put the mask. On. Hey, well, look I think Tony Jaw would be happy. Hollow. No, Ray Park was uh, yeah, the Headless yeah. Horseman right. and then turned into... Um, be, that's Spider -Man. fine. You, you, we've seen so much Peter Parker. We need to give him a break. So if they're going to put Spider-Man in, let's do something up. Let's shake it up. Let's do a different perspective of Spider-Man. And... and and I think, like, you could see from, like, what's it like being a kid living in New York City and the perspective of it, young 20. I mean, grit and, and not be an emo kid. I think that'd be... Uh, but the emo kid, that, that wasn't uh, his portrayal of it. That was a... Uh, Andrew Garfield, that was the yeah, role I'm, I'm that was I'm talking about Tobey Maguire, too, either. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whole Peter Parker... Joven, can I challenge you? Are you really just not into that idea? I, I, I do like some ideas, like especially idea. because the cinematic universe does have, uh, is more leaning towards the messy? universal. Did you like the Spider-Man movies? Did, uh, the first one and the second one. Garfield? Yes. The yeah. first, oh, the, not the, Garfield. The Gar Garfield one. No, Did the second like one was one of the worst superhero so movies I think written you. in is the it, year. Is it, uh, Nick, shut up, I'm yeah. trying. So, is it hard for you to really separate that and just say, oh, Andrew Garfield's now in Mar and then we're supposed to just ignore the first two movies? No, it, you it's, okay it's with that? possible to look in, like, look past the, the writing, as, as I keep going to. Andrew Garfield was able to portray a socially awkward nerd that, though handsome, it is very, like... I'm not even disputing, I'm actually not a huge but I I, I get your argument. I yeah. Andrew Garfield's fine, yeah. but I'm talking about now. Really, step away from Appropriate it. Appropriate for okay. the role. Is that really right then to now reset Spider-Man with the same actor when no. he's done recently? Two well, movies. because I guess what we're saying. Saying. I would. I love Tobey Maguire, but I wouldn't want him back well, as Spider-Man. This I is why it works. It's because Marvel, in those rumors, has said that it won't be an origin story. We aren't going to be doing the romances. It's going to be like Spider-Man's been around for a while, so it makes sense but to that use means the, the lizard did that stupid plot line in our Marvel universe. Really, you're okay well, with that? No. It, you know, look, dude, I actually like Garfield in it. I think he's better than Maguire. But I, and I've argued that before. I just think, start over, you don't need to do an origin story, and throw in something it's different. A, yeah. And throw in something different. Nick gets the point also, again! Dang it! Dang it! My it, God, Nick. It makes sense to have Garfield in what it, What is though. happening? You're, and I apologize for doing this thing. That was Johnny Manzellish, and I apologize. But I, I really Man. don't think, uh, to, just to go back to Tony Jaa real quick, uh, I don't think that would be insulting to him. It would be insulting. I mean, he, it wouldn't? he deserves, no, he deserves no, a giant Scott, look, role look like at, that. Look at actors like... Um, yeah, but he's all CGI. They don't really do fight scenes. No, no that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, in a reboot of Spider-Man, I want to see him know. doing I'm Tony Jaa's fighting moves. Yeah, that, some there are some actors that get more... All right. I killed it. Sorry, blame me. I I didn't. I didn't care for the Tony right, Scott. Right. <laughs> Adam Scott. Tony. Uh, uh, John. Fine. You don't have to like the Adam Scott. Thing, uh, but Tony round Jaw. eight. Round yeah. eight. Now, Nick, is it uh, just to make the tension here? Nick's up a point, right, Dan? I'm correct here. And then Roger's down a point. So you're. What, if you do this, we have to go to tiebreaker. Joven. Okay. It's, unless you uh, really pull a mir Christmas miracle with some amazing battle here. You, I, I'm the game uh, ruiner. Let's, let's for Roger. keep going. Uh, it's always tough in the first time. You're, you, you, you've done great. You're uh, doing great. You're doing. Um, you, you're, my one well, point. I'm going to invite you back. Well, Don't I worry. You're I, doing I, I, gotten any uh, I think you've done way better than Nick for for the record. <laughs> so, but Since everyone I'm does. Nick, as always, the last one is a cue to our honest trailer. Um, and uh, next uh, week's honest trailer uh, is a uh, what did we write here? So I say I was screwed. Uh, it's a property about teenagers with weapons that was produced by Michael Bay. I wonder what that is. Mm. So, Michael Bay didn't direct this movie, but he produced this movie. And that ups this question that we thought might be fun. Was, everyone hates on Bay, right? Everyone says he shouldn't do anything. I what mean. franchise should Michael Bay produce? Which one would we actually like him to take over? Uh, that's our fight, which I think could be fun. Let's see what Roger says. I think Michael Bay should take on Rocky. Um, I want to see... I mean, Rocky has already gone up against some 
pretty insane odds. Uh, uh, you know, he's he's had to fight Mr. T. Uh, Is he going to go up against Transformers in your version? <laughs> Will he knock the head off of a Transformer? Here's the thing. Uh, think about it. Uh, Rocky, Rocky is facing you know, Ivan Drago, who was pretty much the toughest character I think he, he's fought in all the movies. Especially Jason. So, so now, you, now you need someone whose punches cause explosions. And if you have that, uh, if you have Rocky uh, fighting somebody whose single punches can explode somebody, but Rocky is made out of iron, as Ivan Drago has said before. If Rocky's going against this guy, I think that would be an amazing fight. Dan, yep. didn't Hugh Jackman make this movie with battling robots? No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> that was real still, yeah. Also, to, to point out that Rocky, uh, Sylvester Stallone still controls the Rocky franchise. They're doing Creed, which sounds awesome. So he's not letting yeah, that do you, go. Yeah, do you like mm -hmm. the Creed? Have you heard about the Creed reboot? No, I actually hadn't heard it's, about it. it. Michael B. Jordan's playing Apollo's like grandson, and really? Rocky's going to train him. Man, Michael so B. Jordan all over the place. Because I'm kind of him. into that. No. I like Mike. No, Michael B. Jordan, definitely. But do you want Michael yeah. Bay to produce that? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's fair. It's it's not over yet, Nick. Okay, the the Don Simpson and Bruckheimer made an amazing movie with Tony Scott called Top Gun with Tom Cruise. The only and we need to make. Unfortunately, Tony Scott died, but we need to maybe see a Top Gun movie in this lifetime. I think we need to see Tom Cruise uh, step into the instructor and. and 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 pilot this next generation like Chris Pratt as a badass pilot and. Brooke, I'm sorry, Michael Bay is the perfect person to take what Don Simpson and Brookheimer created and then carry it to the next level in the new generation. That's why I want Michael Bay to produce a series of Top Gun movies that has nothing to do with China. Top Gun should <clears throat> never be remade yep. because because it, it's it's the perfect comedy. It is. It's not a comedy. It's, oh, it's it is a, absolutely a comedy. If you've watched that volleyball scene, that's all you need to know. It's a comedy. Was, and you have, you have just, Iceman chomping his teeth at him as a response. That's a response. That's how you, you win a debate. And you know here. how sexy Michael Bay's volleyball scene will be? Yeah. Okay, wait a second. Actually, I'd love to see Michael yeah. Bay have a sexy scene with a bunch but of But the problem is. see Chris Hemsworth as sexy the, goose? Yeah. No, and see, like, that's the thing. He'll just have upskirt shots of Megan Fox in, in his yeah, version. Is that bad? Right, cool. Is that yeah. bad? Yes, because you want to see the hilarious. Uh, unintentional Thanks, homosexuality Thanks, of the original well, Top Gun. Thank you. Michael That's Bay what has I such a it. Michael Bay has such a stigma about it, and, and and Top Gun is is a favorite movie for so many people. If someone saw the bill and saw, oh, Michael Bay is going to do no, a Top Gun me. movie. Yeah, so Joven, what's your uh, selection? Uh, I'm, since I'm not really in this game, I'm gonna I'm gonna have some fun with this. I think we need to keep Michael Bay in his own little world that he's already created. Let him have a Transformers movie until like let's do a reboot of the Transformers. Let's keep him with Transformers, but just keep the people out of it. Uh, I just found out today that um. All right. Mark Wahlberg will be in Transformers 5. Already a big mistake. No more people. So you're saying doing Michael Bay's Transformers the movie. Yes. Like in the planet Cybertron. Yes, just all giant... Uh, robots fighting each other, kicking each other's asses, have all the explosions because we love what makes a Michael Bay movie. We love uh, hot women and over the top explosions. No. We don't like his dialogue. We don't need that dialogue. <laughs> Giant robots Give me Give me punching more. each other, shooting each other, explosions you got the touch. on Cybertron. You got the power. Yeah, that's, see, that's, that's the movie I want, After the original all, Transformers, but we're not going to get that. Michael that's Bay has pitching. the power. No, Let so, him do it. Because they're going to look like just these shards of metal that are all like mangled together. They won't resemble the Transformers. Let of, him produce of it, here. Not, and it will not, not have Weird Al Yankovic on the soundtrack. I guarantee you that. And that's a shame. You, he just dare to be stupid. You've got the touch. I mean, that's that's the that, Transformers that's movie we want. The classic. Wow. Okay. So your argument is that you would say leave him there, but also let him relaunch it again. Reboot. And is it. that a reason? Everything. Is your reason because you don't want him to touch anything else? Uh, he's not a good uh, uh, director when it comes to director produce. When it comes to dialogue and and, and characters and, and and humans. Give can him I, robots. I can I be honest? I don't like any of these choices that much. To be, does anyone want to throw out a second idea? <laughs> second idea for a Michael quickly, Bay movie. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> I want to keep doing Bad Boys Three. That's what I want him to concentrate on. Really? really? No, the no, original wanna, Bad Boys see, with Sean Penn is the best Bad no, Boys I movie. See ba I'm offering. I, I want to see I Bad Boys nothing. Three with The Rock, Will Smith, and Martin Lawrence. That would be the best movie. No. Ever. Michael it's Bay really produces movie. The Punisher. Horrible. Boom. The Punisher produced by Michael Dolph Bay. Dolph Lundgren did the best Punisher. We no, already all know that. <laughs> all right. One last chance, Roger. Is there another one you can think of that might be more fitting for a Michael Bay? Take take a second. It's okay. All right. All right. Let me let me think, think here. For... Think you know how this show works. Yep. Let me so don't think go here. some obscure, weird 80s heart. No, though. I'm not going to. <laughs> He's done a lot of those. <laughs> well, <laughs> Was that Chris uh, Glover rat movie? All right. All right. Michael Bay does Predator. 
We nope. he, we know we know he can do the science fiction stuff. You want to bring back a Predator without Arnold, without without all this stuff. Have him introduce an entirely different looking Predator. It'll be something crazy and robotic, I'm sure, and all. But it'll be <laughs> no. special effects no. destroying no. everything. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> it's like I am intrigued, sir. <laughs> predator two, predator versus no, I, no. I think it's in me. No, they're not even predator go. versus aliens, Fuck and that you. was awful. For, forget humanity. They they are in outer space in their own predator world. All predators going against themselves. This is like the predator almost uprising. like Transformers predators going against Transformers on their own planet, Smith, minus the humans. Yeah, Marlon, yes, but the we're, we're doing some different though. Fighting the cocaine fortress. Like, are they fighting the predators? Yes. yes. <laughs> they, they've joined they've forces for up. one argument. God. I would watch Will Smith and Martin Lawrence versus. Uh, I gotta get right to the point. Thank you. <laughs> wow. I have all those choices. That yep. sounds fun. But, and you know what it does? That makes a tie, and we're out of time. So we have to do a speed round, which to me. Can is, we just fight? Yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna do it. Fight? We, I'm, I'm, really, we have to keep this quick because we gotta uh, wrap this up. So I'm giving you. You can listen. Sorry, Joven. Good, good battle. Good job, yeah, I got a point. They, yeah. they have some point. history. So I, was, as a matter of fact, I don't want to give. Nick we have an five un quick. Sorry, we have five quick battles. You got to give me your quick answers. Each of you are gonna get one, and it's not much fighting. It's really you got to be on the quick. You gotta, does that make sense? I'm gonna give you okay. a question. You're gonna go quickly, lightning and I'm gonna. Round. It's lightning round. Just like one word. I response? may do a follow up, but it's gonna be one quick thing, and maybe a three line, a three word uh, explanation. Dun, 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 Dan, anything to throw dun, dun, in before dun, dun, we go into this line? I was just going to say, I didn't want to give Nick an unfair advantage, but the president agrees with him on the interview. He just said it was a mistake to pull it. So Obama. Oh, wow. Yeah. Monday. Finally. Two they points. said yeah. something. It's about time. Yeah. All right. We ready for speed round. Do we have any like exciting music? If you Play find it. Song. If you do, go for it. Let's just sing it. Or Dan. Sorry, hold on. Do you want me to sing? I don't know. No, don't do that. All right, here we go. Round one on our speed round. All right. Oh. Could two Batman take out a Wolverine? Yes. One, one Batman could take out a Wolverine. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. Well, you, you he makes a point. One could. I think he's yes. right. Roger gets the point. Thank you. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> My Nick. <laughs> who's the best movie archer? Hold on. Legolas, Katniss, Susan from Narnia, or Hawkeye. <laughs> or the girl from Brave. I'll throw her in, too. Best movie archer. Katniss. Uh, Legolas. See, uh, he killed an elephant and uh, a ton of people. Revolutionary hero and really hot. I gotta go Legolas, man. That's two for Roger. You had me really hot. Oh, Nick, uh, here is last. But it's oh. about archery, not about Rick, hotness. Rick, yeah, Rick Moranis or Steve Gutenberg? Rick Moranis. Moranis. Oh. I said it first. He did. He did. <laughs> we agree. That's the best question of yeah. all time. Yeah, that, that was a good one. <laughs> but the goo, man. Ready? Ready? White House down or Olympus has fallen? White, White House, House down. down. Olympus is falling. You're yes! both. <laughs> You're both wow, wrong. this is it. Those <laughs> movies were one. great. <laughs> this is the last one. I love this. Best movie. Adam Sandler film. Oh, God. Happy Gilmore. Um, There's only one right answer, punch man. Punch Drunk Love. That's not it. Billy Madison. Nope. It's Waterboy, guys. Come on. Go get out. Our right answer I'm, was said. Uh, punch Drunk Love. I'm going to go with... Happy Gilmore! Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Monday wins! Oh, it's a diamond oh, you saw it! Monday! The most chaos! Wow, 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 wow! Well, that's a way to wrap up the year if I've ever seen it. Guys, tell us who was wrong. I ne Nick never thought he'd win. He just won. I can't believe it. That was a very good round down the wire. That match. was intense. <laughs> thanks for watching. What did you guys oh. think? What fight do you want to see next? Jovenshire, thanks for coming. Some Let me take my guess. Uh, at uh, at, jo What's at the Joven Show, you can check us out over at Smosh Games on YouTube, and please leave comments below saying how you loved all of my arguments over these guys' arguments. Yes, please. And I, please come back. I'm sorry, <laughs> these two uh, clowns. Uh, they have a lot of experience. 1776. Uh, next to him, Roger Barr at iMockery. It's iMockery at tw Twitter, right? I, uh, M O C K E R Y. <laughs> you can all uh, uh, hashtag Roger was robbed. Uh, and that. Uh, Anything else I you'd think, like to plug? I think, I think I just won the actual fight. So, <laughs> so that there, I win. I win. Uh, and also, uh, go to iMockery.com. I hyphen mockery.com. I got new pixel posters. Oh, yeah. His pixel posters oh, are amazing. amazing. Do check them out. Dick Fundy, fight, Monday, fight. <laughs>
Fight Monday, fight! At Dick Fundy, thank yeah. you. That was uh, Nick. I never thought it would happen. I never, but you did it. I know. It's been taking a while. I want a rematch. Congrats. We're, we're having war. war uh, as three. always, if you're listening or watching on YouTube, please go yep. check us out on iTunes. Subscribe right there. As always, also please check out the Popcorn Talk Movie Network. Uh, they are on YouTube, Popcorn Talk Network. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, Dan Murrell on the Dan Cam. Yeah. Hashtag Dan Cam. Dan, how, was that crazy? That was, that was nuts. And, and I, I'm, I, I'm so looking forward to next week's show, which we've already pre-taped. We've pre-taped. the stakes might have just the gotten a lot lower. A lot. <laughs> Dan, were you scared that one of us was going to get body slammed on you? Yes. So to be clear, <laughs> we have one more episode. We have one more episode we pre-taped uh, for the holidays. You'll see it next Sunday uh, where we do the best fight of the Monday, year. Fight. This fellow's back. Will he win again? Hal Rudnick. Dan Merle and I'm on the ju- I'm on the panelists. It's crazy. It's, about time. It's, it's gonna be nuts. Did I do a good job? You'll find out next Sunday. Always as always, check out Schmozno and the Popcorn Talk Network, YouTube.com slash popcorn talk network. Movie Meet the Movie Press, Marvel News, Jedi Alliance, Night Movie. Check them out too, please, because they have been great supporters of ours. And as always, uh, tell me at Andy Signor on Twitter what you want to see or at Screen Junkies or all of us uh, what you want to see us fight about. Thanks so much for watching. We have an awesome holiday. We'll see you next year Happy and holidays. you'll see a pre-tape next week. See you guys. Every podcast we put on YouTube comes with this kick-ass graphic, listing all the topics your favorite Screen Junkies podcasters are talking about. If you click the topics, you can skip around and choose your own podcast battle royale. Go ahead, try them all. If you haven't already, subscribe to Screen Junkies on YouTube to join us for future fights. Or if you prefer to listen on iTunes, click the logo to download an audio version. Lastly, please support our friends at the Popcorn Talk Network for more awesome shows.